Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, and today we are going to be looking at a film for our Will It Fail series with The New Mutants, which is set to come out on April 3rd of this year after a nearly two year delay. Uh, the film was originally supposed to come out, I believe, in 2018. Um, so. We're going to do our usual breakdown, um, you know, we'll go through the, the cast, the director, you know, what we've seen uh, of the film so far, and of course the budget. Now, the one thing with the budget in this film, as I will mention, is that uh, I was not able to get exact numbers or even ranges for numbers for this. Um, there's nobody that appears to have it out, but I'm going to do my own estimate, and I'm going to estimate it's probably going to be somewhere in the realm of 100 to 125 million dollars for the budget, um, not accounting for a large level of reshoots. But I'll get to that when we uh, when we get to that section of the video. So first off, uh, let's take a look at who is behind the camera, uh, and that is a man named Josh Boone. Now Josh Boone. Um, has not directed a lot. He's mostly known for The Fault in Our Stars. Uh, he also directed a uh, television series called The Stand. Um, and he's more well known as a writer and producer than a director. This was one of his first big film forays, even though it's coming out several years after some of his other projects. Um, and... So I can't really give too many points for that. Obviously, he has he's able to direct drama, and he knows how to kind of direct actors. Uh, so you have that, uh, which, you know, can make or break a story like this. So I get it. You know, he's a good person, it appears anyway, at developing character. Um, but go looking at The Fault in Our Stars, that was based off of a true story, if I remember correctly. So he had something pretty solid to work with as opposed to kind of forming this whole new thing from the New Mutants comic books. Because obviously it wasn't a horror comic, it was X-Men. Um, and this feels more horror-based, and again, that's what it was advertised as. Uh, which is why I'm kind of interested in it, to be honest. Um, but like I said, I can't really take too much off for Josh Boone, because I feel like he's a good director for a project like this. But he is inexperienced. Um, especially when he made this again. This was several years ago now. Um, so I take a little bit off for that for the rookie director. I think you could see some mistakes in this film because of that. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll move on from that and uh, we'll take a look at the next thing, which is the cast. Now the cast for this movie doesn't have a whole ton of draws. Now your, your mainstays are Anya Taylor-Joy, who hasn't been in a whole lot, and Maisie Williams, who of course most people know from Game of Thrones. Uh, you also have uh, Alice Braga coming in and a whole host of other people uh, that are you know, lesser names. But really, Maisie Williams is the one big standout of the main group of people that are in this film. Uh, so I th and, and the thing is, I don't think she's going to have... She's probably actually going to have more draw than I thought she would maybe like a year or so ago. Uh, because Game of Thrones is coming up on, I think... Uh, the season finale was like eight months ago, so I think you can still get away with releasing this now or in, in another month um, and kind of heaping off of that. Uh, so she'll probably get a bit of a draw, but I don't think it'll be anything too significant. And then everybody else is just kind of, in terms of uh, film-going draw, just from an actor perspective, uh, they, they seem, you know, pretty plain. Uh, so, you know, I don't think you're going to find, uh, you know, people aren't, it's not like, you know, plaster on a billboard, oh, Scarlett Johansson or uh, Robert Downey Jr. or somebody, you know, somebody, a, a well-known name, um, you know, Orson Welles, even though he's been dead for like 40 years. Um, so the cast, again, you really only have the one standout as far as name draw. Uh, again, not saying anything bad about the other actors, but I'm saying, you know, she's the name that stands out on this list. Uh, currently, anyway, you know, obviously most of these people are young. They could have very, very good careers, but hers is the Maisie Williams's career is the one that is most recognizable. Um, and I don't think that's going to give you too much of a draw. So I'll probably say the the cast is not helping you either. So that's a little bit of a drawback. Um, and now we go into some of the more interesting stuff, which is the marketing and the promotional material for this film. Because we've had multiple trailers, but the, the thing is, I'm only going to count the most recent trailer, which I did a breakdown of uh, when it came out. 
Um, I'm only going to count that particular trailer because that is that particular cut of this film, the one that Disney wanted them to make, or the one that I presume that they presided over. Um, so, yeah, I think that you can get away with that uh, a little bit, but it, it's one of those things like the a lot of the stuff before this could be a moot point, and that's a problem. Uh, because you really don't know what to expect. Again, the only thing you really can go by is that uh, that latest trailer that they came out with, and you know maybe you know take a look at the other trailers just for reference material and stuff like that. But eventually, you're going to run into a wall because we don't know if half of that other stuff is in the movie, depending on how much this thing has been reshot. But what I did see in that trailer, I liked. Um, and I thought it was good, and I thought that was the first time we had seen some of the CGI in the film, which looked fairly good. Um, you know, they definitely put some time into that, but it seems like it's, uh, wherever they are is a stationary place, so it's just one uh, series of sets that they're filming on, which can cut down on costs significantly uh, when you're doing a film. So I can, I can see maybe that kind of balancing out the CGI budget, uh, depending on where this film lies, and it's in the budget I gave for it, because apparently nobody else has one. Um... So, it didn't look bad, but you don't know what to expect because people are confused about this. And that kind of leads into the other thing about the continuous delays with this film. Um, is that, you know, it's been in and out of the news for so long, a lot of people didn't even think it was coming out. A lot of people don't even know it's coming out because here's the other thing. The advertising campaign for this thing has been in the toilet. And I understand that because Disney... Uh, doesn't want to pump any more money into the old X-Men franchise because of Dark Phoenix. Uh, so there's no real reason for them to do this other than just releasing the film as is, basically. Um, you know, and I don't expect them to, to spend extra money, uh, you know, to, you know, do various things. You know, they're going to get their cut of the film, they're going to put that film out in theaters, and they're going to be the said and done with it. So I understand it. Um... And then uh, looking at, you know, the, the anything else for it, uh, you know, they don't really have any kind of tie-in stuff. Again, the, the advertising campaign for it has been minimal, like I just said. So I, this movie is not getting a whole lot of exposure, but it's the thing. I don't think Disney really cares because they're probably, they're just playing with house money with this thing anyway. Because uh, most of the production for it, I assume, happened when Fox still, uh, still had the film. Uh, or exclusively had the film. Uh, so... You have that in there, but there's not really a whole lot in the advertising department. So this film is not going to be something that I think people are going to flock to. It's coming out in early April, which kind of predates the summer blockbuster season a little bit. Yeah, I know it kind of extends from February to December now, but um, it, it kind of has that. You know, it's a little bit before that kind of red zone, that May, June, July, August window uh, for uh, the summer movie season. So... I think they're going to try. I think that's a smart choice in the sense that you don't want competition for this film. But at the same time, if you're not going to advertise it, the people aren't going to know this damn thing is coming out. You know, I, again, I've talked to people that didn't even know that this movie was still happening. They thought it got canceled years ago. Um, so I think they're doing a bad job at that. And then on top of that, uh, you know, going into this, there could have just been people that just got sick of it that said, oh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not interested anymore. I've heard too much about this. I don't care. You know, people that have just kind of gotten disinterested in it through the, the sheer, you know, length and of its development hell. Um, so, you know, there's that. But I think ultimately a lot of the stuff in this movie is going to end up hurting it. I think that it could have definitely a second life on streaming. Um, I think this would probably do good on Disney Plus uh, and stuff like that. Obviously, they're starred for content anyway. Uh, but, you know, I think it could do a lot of good on there. Or if they wanted to sell it off to third parties like Netflix and stuff like that, they could probably get some more money out of it. But I think this the, the film opening of this, I think, is going to hurt uh, because you don't have the awareness of the audience. This is going to be something where somebody's going to go, go in there to see another movie, and they're going to see that on the little board behind the desk, and they're going to say, oh, I didn't even think that was coming out. And then they make a matinee. That's going to be probably a majority of your film goers, which is kind of weird, or at least a good amount of them. Um, so there's that. And now we move down to the budget. Now, like I said before, I had to estimate this budget uh, because there aren't exact numbers for the budget on this film, at least none that I could find. 
Uh, so I'm estimating it based on what I can see in the trailer in terms of the production. Uh, you know, the getting the actors and stuff like that. Um, so, and then on top of that, uh, you know, taking into account the, uh, you know, the, the work and stuff on the film, if there have been reshoots or not, I would put the budget for the film somewhere around the Shazam area. So it's about, you know, I said at the beginning, like 100 to 125, but let's just for the sake of it, call it about 90 million to 120 million. Uh, is probably where I would place this budget. So I'm going to use the 120 million because that is on the higher end of my estimate. Um, so if that's the case, then this thing is going to have to probably uh, surface out at close to 300 million uh, for it to actually break even. Um, now here's the problem: is I, I again, this film is going to have an international release, at least as far as I know. Um, I don't think it's getting a China release. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but I don't think it is. But, again, I feel if they're not advertising it in the States, they're definitely not advertising it overseas. Although they might be trying to advertise it in England because of Maisie Williams and because of any other British people that are mixed into the cast. So I can see that happening maybe just because they want to monetize her name as much as possible. Um, but aside from that market, I couldn't see them doing more advertising than what they're already doing here in the States. So... Again, you're going to run into the same problem. I would probably put this movie somewhere around the $250 million range. I think it's going to be just under, uh, between 250 and 300 I think it's going to be just, it's not going to quite get to that $300 million number. Um, and I think, again, that's more the fault of the, advertise, uh, the advertising department um, and, you know, not letting people know that this film was actually being released. Um, but that's my estimate, between 250 and 300 million, um, and which, again, it would leave it at a slight loss of money, which they'll probably make up in media sales and streaming numbers and stuff like that. But as far as theatrics go, it will not, I don't think it I think it'll, if it does, it'll barely make uh, its production budget back um, over the course of its theatrical run. Uh, so... Uh, with that, um, I would like to know below, are you guys excited for New Mutants? Do you want to see it? Uh, are you just kind of done with it because it's been in development hell for so long? Do you think it's going to suck? Do you think it's going to be good? Uh, again, put your comments below. I'd like to know what you're thinking. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?